Hello all you shining stars and welcome to my channel Shining Star Soup. Today I'm going to be doing a story time on my co-worker who stole $3,000 and got away with it. Now a little disclaimer before I jump into the video, I am not condoning, I'm not trying to give anybody ideas. Now what you do in your own life is your business, but please, please do not use this as a tutorial video because that is not what this is for. Thank you. All right. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. I publish, I'm trying to publish at least once a week. Lately, I've been doing two to three times a week. I do unboxings. I do winner's finds. I do story times. I'm hoping to do reviews very soon once I get some products that I think are worth reviewing or I get uh, other like Chick Advisor and uh, Top Box Circle. So I'm still waiting to get products for review. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to jump right into my story. Okay, so about six years ago, I worked at a payday loan lending place. Think Money Mart. Now this particular place, there was only the three of us ladies working there. Brittany, the manager, who was an older lady, I think like um, in her early 70s, and then there was uh, Beth, who was in her early 50s. This doesn't really matter. Um, I've changed the names anyway. It's just I want to put emphasis on uh, Brittany. Now, Brittany was the kindest manager. She was fair. She was really close friends, or so we thought, with Beth. And, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I'm still on the train. I'm still trying to trying to get this uh, story together in my head to tell you guys. All right, so we used to do collection calls, and we would do collection calls. We had this big room in the back that had some old files. Now, Beth had this uh, bright idea, and I'll explain <laughs> a little bit about it. So we had this one guy that nobody could get a hold of. Well, Beth couldn't get a hold of this guy. She was the only one that ever called him. So I'm, I get on the phone and I talk, I get a hold of this guy, which was rather unusual because apparently, you know, they couldn't get a hold of this guy for the last six months, or at least Beth couldn't. So I got a hold of him. I told him you owe $1,500, which was the max amount of a payday loan you could take from back in January. Uh, keep in mind, it was November, so it was quite a few months that had passed before I was giving this gentleman this call. And he was very surprised. He did not know what I was talking about. Now, this does happen often, or it did happen often, where people would say, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, or I paid that, etc., etc." But this guy was pretty, pretty serious and he asked to speak to the manager. Couldn't get a hold of the manager. Brittany wasn't in until next day. So I come in and I'm not sure what was said between Brittany and this client, but this client had taken it to head office. Because he took it to head office, there was an investigation done. And a couple days later, we are surprised with an investigator. Now, Beth, Brittany, and I were all working that day. Beth was uh, overly friendly to the to this investigator, I guess you could say. Uh, you, like I knew her as being kind of cold-hearted, kind of abrasive, kind of a female dog. You know where I'm going with this, and it was it was just weird. So the guy was going to come out for three days to do this investigation. Well, on day two, uh, Beth was suddenly in the hospital, and she was in the hospital with either a busted artery or blown artery, I don't know the exact term, in her leg, which was really interesting because uh, Brittany's cousin, Brittany the manager's cousin, had died from what happened and what exactly what Beth said she was in the hospital with. <laughs> yeah, uh, did I mention that Brittany and Beth had got along well, they were friends, Brittany trusted her, on and on. All right, so for this entire investigation, Beth was in the hospital with the same uh, thing that happened to Brittany's cousin uh, a few years back. Uh, after the investigation had concluded at our office, Beth walks in and she has a letter in her hand. 
it's a resignation letter and her key. She goes on to tell me that she found this great job in Grand Prairie and that um, working in a kitchen that she couldn't pass up. And I'm like, well, isn't that a coincidence? Isn't that? But I still wanted to trust Beth. I'm a very trusting person myself. So, uh, you know, it wasn't my call to make. And it's not like I could force her to, to stay in, force her to not give this resignation letter, whatever. So a week after the investigation is concluded, we find out what had happened. As it would turn out, that guy that I had called that had, you know, Beth couldn't get a hold of, um, Beth had somehow gotten a hold of Brittany's login information. Rather, she was looking over her shoulder or Brittany being as trusting as she is gave it to her. I'm not sure, but either way, she had uh, Brittany's login information, the manager's login information. Keep in mind, we did not have cameras in our office. That's a very, this is going to, yeah, it's a very valid point coming up rather quickly. So what Beth had done is she had taken an old file from the back, banking on, you know, none of us ever being able to get a hold of them because we didn't go, we didn't send our uh, delinquent files to collections. We were supposed to, but we didn't, you know, Brittany was basically, she was a kind-hearted lady who could be talked into anything and that's how a lot of people got out of their loans. Anyway, Beth had taken out a payday loan in this guy's name, loaded it up onto a credit card, went to the local Walmart, took it out of the ATM machine. And as it turns out, she had done it twice. First time she got away with it, so she decided to do it closer to Christmas a second time. And because this was a delinquent file, because we usually waited three weeks before we really started to um, get on these people, uh, this was, we weren't on top of this. We weren't on top of this file. Uh, well, Beth was on top of the file. You do the math. And um, so, number one, we didn't have any cameras in the office, so there was no visual proof. The only proof they had was the day that the loan, both loans had been taken out were days that only Beth was working. The first time, I wasn't even working, so of course I was in a clear. Second time was on a Sunday. I didn't work Sunday, so again, I was in a clear. But Brittany also wasn't working that day. And rather, Beth was going to say, oh, Brittany came in that day, whatever excuse she was going to make, it didn't matter because, I mean, she had already quit. So they couldn't get proof that way. They could, they only had the timestamp, but they had no visual proof. And of course, if Beth would have got a lawyer, she would have, you know, came up with that excuse. And the, the other thing was they tried to go to Walmart. Uh, they tried to contact the ATM company. They tried to get the videos uh, that were shown on the ATM. Unfortunately, too much time had passed again. And the other thing was, I guess the last thing was, it would have been really expensive, more than probably $3,000 for them to, you know, pursue Beth in court. So they didn't do that. And the real kicker, the real cherry on the top as to why that coworker got away with it, the company went bankrupt two months later. To this day, there is no sign of this company. It's just Money Mart. So there you go. There you have it. Beth manipulated poor Brittany. She lied. She played on her heartstrings. The whole deal with her being in the hospital with the artery leg thing. Just a, a disgusting human being all around. And... I'm hoping that karma is a real thing. I'm hoping karma kicks Beth in the ass like she deserves. Sorry for saying ass. And there I go. I just said it again. Uh, I hope no kids are watching. Maybe I should put a little disclaimer. I say a bad word. Uh, anyway, moral of the story is be careful who you trust. Money is um, a, a motivator that will make people do underhanded things manipulative things it's really unfortunate but it is the way some of the world and some people not everybody there are still honest people out there but it's the way people are and the way the world works so my heart went out to Brittany you know she was such a sweet old lady and 
she had this happen to her so that's the end of my story time i'm at the ten minute mark thank you all for watching if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you like the video hit that like button i'm still planning on doing more story times there will be an unboxing soon and i hope all you shining stars have a shining star day